So thank you for the for the introduction. Uh, welcome everyone. I hope you enjoy a Halloween party last night. Uh, we will start a little bit less technical topic. So really more like a conceptual, and we will start about DAOs. So what are DAOs? Uh, just raise your hand if you have heard the like the DAO. Like what is a DAO? Perfect. So basically, majority of you know uh, what is a DAO, so we don't need to start with the basic. But what it makes it different compared to the traditional organization is that they are using the modularity, programmability, immutability, and transparency of the blockchain technology. So they are built on top of blockchain. That's like their infrastructure, that's all what they are running on. And the rest, I would say, is the same as any other organization. So the difference is that they are built on the blockchain, but then it's the tra very traditional organization where we are trying to coordinate people. There are many uh, like opinions on what, what is the DAO most similar to? Is it like a city? Is it like a state? Is it like a organization? Is it like a corporation or some like a gaming guild or something like that? But today I would like to look at slightly different angle. I would like to look at like what actually govern DAOs? Is it processes? Is it people? Or is it a culture? What basically govern the organization and making it run smoothly? Overall, uh, I think that uh, processes are where everything starts. Because we trust in the code, we want to make sure that like the fundamentals are governed by the smart contracts and we cannot really encode people or the culture in it but what is the what actually should be encoded where we should be like putting something as a rule and where we should like rather empower uh, people doing things like based on my experience with various DAOs, uh, the average time for contributor, uh, contributor being within a DAO, it's around like six months, which is very short period of time. Like people usually don't have a time to learn hundreds of processes, how you actually should interact with each other, uh, what it's allowed, what it's not allowed, because before they actually learn it, they, they are already leaving. And even in traditional companies, when I was working in like large corporation and people were there for five, ten years, they still didn't know all the processes that the corporation had. Like some of the processes were basically not used at all. So I think like we need to have the principles. We need to have the principles in the code. We need to have the principles as the processes, like really the most fundamental one. But the rest should be governed by the people. The people should be empowered. Like I said, like we trust in code, but we need to trust in people as well. Because at the end, we, all of us here, we are building this Web3. We are building the DAOs. We are together coming up with creative ideas, like how to make things better. It's not processes. It's not you know, the blockchain itself. It's us who is coming up with the idea. So we need to empower people within the DAO to really be able uh, to make their own decision. Uh, I have one example from like Web2 where Netflix famously set up their uh, expense policy. And what the expense policy said was all employees must act in the company's best interest. That's it. No, you can spend on dinner 50 bucks. But you, because you are manager 65. <laughs> no, they don't have that. Like anyone should be acting in the best interest of the company. 
and it worked. It worked very well for them. Of course, there were some people who were trying to cheat the system and trying to like expand more than they should. But overall, if you look at the system as a whole, it was very efficient, and people were much happier working there because they didn't need to think like what's the allowance or what's not and so on. And they genuinely cared about the company and they genuinely wanted to do what is in the best interest of the employer. And we should do the same within the DAOs. We should empower people to act in the best interest of the DAO. And when we have like all the governance structures within the DAO, we again trying to like put all the processes there. But sometimes the individual contributor has the most context about the particular problem and they should be deciding on their own like if, for example, like I can decide, should I come here to speak for you and should some DAO which I'm representing like maybe pay for my trip? Like, I feel like it might have some value, and if it's in the best interest of that particular DAO, which is in this case maybe when class consulting, I should be able to decide on that. Uh, so this is like the examples where I should not go through ridiculous process just to basically give up because I don't want to do it, but I should be empowered to do what is the best uh, for the DAO. And that's really what is making the decentralized system. Like we decentralize the powers to people and any of us can decide what we feel is the best. And the DAO itself provides the fundamentals. The processes are encoded, the principles are encoded, so we know like what are the basics, who can distribute maybe the funds or larger amounts. We basically provide the infrastructure for all the contributors, and then the contributors act on top of it. And, you know, uh, The infrastructure is also a very, very important part here. So, so if we don't have like coordination mechanisms, which works, it will also suffer. So one part is the empowerment, and the second part is we need to enable them. So we need to set up the coordination mechanisms like for, you know, like uh, communicating on Twitter, discourse, or like storing data or project management or Notion or having storage, you know, on some decentralized plat platform like a Filecoin. Like that's something what it's the base and on top of it uh, we go. But how we actually en ensure that when we enable and empower the contributors, the act in the best interest of the company is actually a good way. And now we are getting into culture. The kind of the third, I, and I believe the most critical aspect of it all. What many organizations are doing is they are putting like annual report on like what's their culture. And like they state like, you know, we are uh, all the nice words. I. I I don't want to quote anyone, but do they really act on it? Do they really act what they state in the annual report? It depends. Like if the annual report is just stating what they are already doing, fair enough. Like that's how they are acting, that's their culture. If they are just trying to be someone else or something else, that's, that's probably won't work. And. The culture is the how we act, how we as a contributor are interacting with each other. The culture is not passed through documentation. The culture is passed through interaction and action. So as an example, what Netflix has an expense policy. So if me, me it's paying for the trip, for the conference, and then new contributors are, are coming, and they see, like, if I would be able to speak at the conference and representing the DAO, that's probably acting in the best interest of the company. And I'm passing that from one person to another and going from there. It, it's nowhere written, 
it will be changing and that's how we are basically empowering people and giving them kind of the idea how how they should act and if you have DAOs like announce DAO, which is like adding one contributor every day, it's easy to pass the culture from one person to another because it's only one person a day. However, if you have those DAOs which are uh, going through the airdrop and they just had 2,000 contributors at one point, for them, it's really hard to find their culture. And what I'm trying to really like say here, and it's the culture, it's what actually makes the DAO. It's not the process, it's the culture. Because the culture, it's, it's the way how people will actually act and how the DAO will evolve. I'm working with many DAOs and helping them with their processes and like improvements. And truth to be told, every single one, starting with the process, every single one wants to improve the way how they work through implementing new processes. But almost none of them are looking on how we can actually empower people through culture and together solve all the problems. So, thank you uh, for, uh, for listening. If you want to learn more about DAO governance, uh, we are actually do, or organizing free sessions every Monday, 2 p.m. EST, uh, online. So, if you hit me up on Telegram, Twitter, I can add you there. And also, if you have questions now, I will be back at that uh, whiteboard on the left, and we can discuss some of the DAO governance topics. So, thank you.